Hi everyone, in this brief announcement, we are going to talk about cross-chain payments with tax guarantees. I did this research with Rob Van Glebeek and Vincent Grammelio. Let's start by defining the cross-chain payment problem. For instance, if I want to buy something with bitcoins, but the seller only accepts Ether, I need to transfer value from one blockchain to another. This problem is not limited to cryptocurrencies and blockchains. The more general question here is how to describe payment systems and how to send value across different payment systems. In our model, we represent transfer value by ledgers. A ledger is a shared data structure that tracks value ownership. This is a useful abstraction that can represent, for instance, a bank or a blockchain. Now, if you want to transfer value across different ledgers, we can use multi-hop networking. We are going to find a path of ledgers and connectors, where connectors are intermediaries who own an account on two ledgers. These connectors are going to convert the value from one ledger to another. The problem is that if we have many connectors, and if we don't trust them, how can we answer that a connector is not going to steal the money, especially if the network is not reliable? In our paper, we introduced a new formalism called ANTA that stands for Asynchronous Network of Time Automata. Thanks to this formalism, we expressed a solution to the cross-chain payment problem under Synchrony. Then we focused on partial synchrony, where we showed first an impossibility result, and then a solution to a similar problem under partial synchrony. In this brief announcement, we don't have time to formalize our solutions. Instead, we are going to give the intuition of the cross-chain payment problem and present some results that we found under partial synchrony. In the cross-chain payment problem, we are going to consider a set of customers. The first customer is Alice. She wants to pay Bob, the last customer. However, they don't use the same currency, so Alice is going to rely on a set of connectors who are going to convert the value from one ledger to another. In exchange for Alice's payment, Bob is going to issue a certificate that proves that the payment is successful. For instance, we can consider the certificate to be some cryptographic signature. We must note that no customer trusts any other customer. For instance, some connectors can be malicious and try to steal some money, or some customers can just be disconnected from the network. We also assume that we have escrows, who are specific processes who can handle value in a predefined manner. For instance, for each ledger, some customer can store value in an escrow, and this value will be transmitted to the next customer only if some condition is met. Otherwise, the value will be returned to the sender. If we are using a blockchain, escrows can be implemented with hash time lock contracts or smart contracts. If we are using a bank, escrows can simply be notaries or legally binding contracts. We cannot define the correctness properties for the cross-chain payment protocols. Let's start with security properties. The first one is that if Alice pays something, she has to get the certificate back. Similarly, if Bob issues the certificate, he should get paid. And finally, connectors should not lose money. We also want the protocol to terminate. Finally, we want some success guarantees. We call that strong liveness. That is to say that if all parties are correct, then Bob is eventually paid. Note that many cross-chain payment protocols don't require this liveness property. In our case, the protocol where parties always abort is not acceptable, even if such a protocol would terminate and respect the security property. When the network is synchronous, it is easy to design cross-chain payment protocols. Indeed, since there is a known upper bound on communication delay, we can use hash time lock contracts that are going to store some value until some condition is met or until some timer expires. We can then wonder whether it is possible to achieve the same kind of results without synchrony. Under partial synchrony, the bounds on computation speed and message delay are unknown, so we cannot use time locks anymore. Also, we need to see the difference between messages that are delayed 
and messages that are actually not sent, for instance, by faulty participants. We actually show that if communications are partially synchronous, there is no eventually terminating cross-chain payment protocol. Luckily, it is still possible to achieve some results under partial synchrony. We are going to replace strong liveness by weak liveness, where if all the participants are correct and wait for long enough, then the payment is eventually successful. The inspiration behind this property comes from the non-blocking atomic commit literature. We are also going to introduce two certificates, a commit certificate and an abort certificate, instead of a single one. Under this new set of assumptions, if communications are partially synchronous, there exists a cross-chain payment protocol with weak level guarantees. In practice, the implementation of such a protocol is going to rely on some mechanisms such as a Byzantine consensus algorithm to ensure that the participants agree on the outcome of the transaction, even if the, if the network is not synchronous. Finally, we can compare our problem with the cross-chain deals problem, recently discussed by Early, Liskov and Shura. Deals allow for more general topology, because any participant can send assets to any other set of participants. However, they require Alice and, and Bob to be connected by a ledger. To conclude, we studied the classic problem of transaction commit in the recent context of blockchain transactions. The main takeaway of this talk is that liveness guarantees matter, and that it is actually possible to achieve weak success guarantees for cross-chain payments even under partial synchrony. Thank you.